Well, good afternoon, and I'm Pat Harker, as you've heard. I really want to thank Don first and foremost for putting me before Lindsay and not after, uh, because she's going to be a very tough act to follow. Uh, I'm thrilled to be part of this panel to talk about a little bit about our efforts at Delaware with regard to preparing educators, teachers, to deal with this issue. Now, as you heard, um, universities, there are simple models of how to, drive, to try to drive this throughout the curriculum, but um, universities are complicated places. And there are a lot of efforts, different pieces around the university trying to deal with this. And the hard part is getting it all integrated. Right? It's easy to start little pieces. It's getting the integration to happen. It's, that's what I want to spend a few moments talking about. But I need to give the lay of the land, at least at Delaware right now. Uh, it's probably not surprising that most of our efforts at UD around climate change coursework, the formal coursework, occurs in our College of Earth, Ocean, and Environment. 39 courses in the college include climate in the course description. About a quarter of the courses taught have the word climate in the title. And in at least half a dozen of the courses, we're educating pre-service or in-service K through 12 teachers as part of this. And many majors have a climate component within the college as well. We're experimenting now with trying to bring climate courses down to the freshman and sophomore levels where students are still, at, understandably so, generalists. Educating generalists is important, as we were talking about, and as you were just talking about, because one of our most critical jobs is not just preparing the specialists, but preparing the population at large, as citizens, as voters, as taxpayers, to think critically about these issues. Going forward, I think we'll, we'll have to see more need for specialized courses as well, though, covering a spectrum of majors and more integration of companies and agencies involved in this so we can try to learn what their needs are to plan for and to make a real difference and to implement change. And that's one of the issues. It's not just awareness, but it's getting people on the ground doing things that will make a difference. For example, our, we have very high profile research activities in sustainable energy, solar, wind, vehicle to grid technology, and that gives us a natural leadership role in climate change education. And to do it, not just with the students on campus, but across our various cons constituencies, K through 12 teachers and students, Delaware residents, the workforce, and preparing that workforce for a different kind of economy. In terms of preparing K through 12 teachers to teach climate change, we're trying to take a more holistic view, finding out what freshman elementary ed majors know about the climate and how it changes over time. We found their understanding coming into the university is similar to the population as a whole. It's limited. I mean, you see this every day. There's little knowledge around the science of climate change and of the Earth's cycles that influence it, the carbon cycle, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and the feedback loops within those cycles and between those cycles. It's also difficult for students to conceive the huge scale of time and space that provides the context for these discussions, the climate change discussions. This is scientifically complex stuff, and that's a real challenge to try to get across to the students as a whole. So we're following these students, the students that we're preparing to be teachers, to see how their content and their pedagogical knowledge develops through their undergraduate experience and when they leave into the K through 12 classrooms. And I, we're doing this because we find we have an opportunity to maximize our engagement when student teaching begins and prospective students have that first wholly immersive school experience. It's a scary moment for those who ever went through it, right? At that critical stage, they tend to see why the science of climate change is so important how much they'll need to blend content and pedagogy to make an effective lesson plan, and how much content can inform their pedagogy. I mean, they're starting off just trying to learn the basics, and at some point, the light bulb goes off and they say, I need content, and I need to motivate my students. This is a very motivating area. But we're gonna continue to follow them. We're gonna see three, four years out into their teaching careers, when the dust is settled, when they get more confident in the classroom, and when the classroom's a little less scary, there's an opportunity then with our alums, the teachers that are out in the community, there's an opportunity for influencing and building influential professional development programs around this topic. At that point, they're eager to work 
with what they're actually teaching and what they have to teach to inject some creativity into the prescriptive standards that were really their focus in their first few years of teaching, right? I just have to make sure I check all the boxes, do it right. At some point, we need to be there as a university to meet their needs professionally. I cited the complex, the scientifically complex nature of climate change as a challenge, but a bigger one in a college curriculum is that it, we're not as interdisciplinary as we could and we should be, and this is an ongoing challenge at a university. We're further along in concept of being interdisciplinary than we really are in practice. And this area, climate change, virtually defines interdisciplinary and content courses, especially intro courses. Biology, chemistry, physics, they're not handled, they're not set up to handle this very well, right? T faculty have their way of teaching it and they're pretty much stuck with the way they're teaching it. We'd, frankly, we'd still rather be pretty siloed. And this, topic, climate change education, is something where you really can't be very siloed. It's a system. We need scientists, policy educators, and others to team on courses, on parts of courses or whole courses, that bring people and disciplines together. We're not very good at that, but we are making some headway. Science in general is recognizing that climate change and other complex problems must be tackled by people with separate expertise, and they need to have the ability, and more importantly, the inclination to want to work together as a team. And academics, not all academics are comfortable with that, but this is something we have to deal with if we're going to make headway on this topic. We're beginning to do the same thing in terms of climate change education, bringing these students and faculty together. We're making some progress. They get the discrete science pieces, but we have to make sure they also get the big picture at the same time. We also need more inquiry-based hands-on learning. Uh, we absolutely need this hands-on, roll-up-your-sleeve kind of learning to develop in the students the skills to collect good data, to engage with and conduct good research, to think critically about that data, to interpret it in, with a critical eye. Problem-based learning, as we call it, is a huge pedagogical strength at UD and actually in all Delaware schools. And climate change education is perfectly adapted to problem-based learning. For example, we have an interdisciplinary problem-based learning uh, course for K-8 certification that rotates in-depth investigations among earth sciences, life sciences, physical sciences, and methods. Because the course isn't content specific, it draws on multidisciplinary faculty to show students how the sciences, how the sciences interact and what that intersection means in terms of public health and safety, public policy, environmental, sustainability, and so forth. The earth science unit on water resources and climate change impact can be transformative to an elementary ed major who's required to take just three science courses for certification. This is the time, this is absolutely the time for an intensive cross-disciplinary focus on climate. Right now, states are working out what STEM, that holy grail, means for teacher preparation. We have new curricular frameworks from the Department of Education that emphasize the STEM disciplines and their integration, and local and national agendas that place high-quality STEM education at the center of job creation and economic development. Climate change can be instructive in how we explain STEM to the public, how we not only educate our students, but how we explain STEM to the public, and how it can help us to manage all the complex social and policy issues. Scientific complexity and insufficient interdisciplinary integration, though these are hard things to do, breaking down those silos and the culture that we typically have within the educational system, but they're not our only challenges. We still need more investigation into how to develop students all along the K through college continuum. We know there are gaps, there are big gaps in content, even though we think our content at Delaware is better than most. What we don't have is a capstone course at the high school level that gives this kind of holistic view that we think is so important for climate change education, pulling the pieces together. Of course, we universities, we own a big piece of this deficit. Think about it. A student applies to college and, and we look at a checklist to meet their entrance requirements, right? A course in biology, a course in chemistry, a course in physics. And while all these disciplines might impinge on climate change, the topic itself is not on the checklist. Right? It's not something we look for. All of us can work toward a coordinated, coherent K through 16 curriculum. We can underpin good climate change education with good science education. We can do more than show 
students how science can solve the issues we face. We can help teachers critically assess with the students whether the science is solving them. Not just teach them the science, but also to step back and say, are we making progress? And then we can explore where the science leaves off and where the policy issues kick in. In Delaware, as in Maryland, there's a huge interest in localizing climate change education given this region, the Mid-Atlantic region, vulnerable water resources, threats to our coastal tourism, our, our proximity to I-95, this huge carbon corridor, and our ample wind resources. We can not just make this an abstract concept for students, but bring it home, make it very real, right literally in their backyard. We've got a lot of opportunities, especially with our commitments as states to race to the top, with NSF funding large, multidisciplinary, multi-state, multi-expertise partnerships, with more policymakers accepting the fact of climate change, and now moving beyond that to start looking for answers, solutions. With respect to our state leaders and our state leaders and, and legislators, so they are increasingly committed to this area as well, and I know that governors O'Malley and Markell deserve a lot of praise because this ball is moving. I mean, things are happening. Before I give up my time here, I need to acknowledge that preparing teachers for climate change education and preparing educators, it's really two different things. Educator is a much broader set. Teacher is just a subset of educator. As a land-grant, sea-grant university, our constituency, not unlike Maryland, is much broader than its students. We're obligated to connect all our citizens in Delaware with research and resources that advance the public good. And that's really an all-age proposition, from three to five-year-olds to 50-plus members of our community that want to get educated about this. Through our Delaware Sea Grant program, we are actually working very hard engaging the public on issues with very real impact. For example, what does sea rise mean for a state that will be basically underwater if we don't do something about it? What's the effect on the natural environment, on ecosystem services, on public health and safety, and the list goes on and on. And this kind of communication has a timeline, but it also carries an opportunity to broaden the appeal of climate change education. As was mentioned earlier, poetry. I mean, we have an opportunity here to incorporate the arts, humanities, social sciences, all the other disciplines in effective pieces and programs appropriate to larger audiences and are accessible to them. And a good example on campus was the International Polar Year, where we not only had conversations about the science, but also art and the, what the polar regions really mean to the human soul, beyond polar bears. <laughs> right? That kind of programming, bringing those pieces all together, is critical if we're going to engage our broader communities. And we're also interested, like you are, in new media platforms to communicate these issues and to engage an already active, and you'll hear about this in a moment, student body. It's not just about being at a podium with this generation. It's about being on social media. You know, our students have hosted, and you'll hear, all sorts of things around climate change. And they've really pushed us uh, as a university to start you know, practicing what we preach. And so that's been really, really helpful. Uh, this is a very engaged generation around this topic, and you know it. If you've not seen it, I mean, you see it in every college campus. We, they are actually in many ways leading us in terms of the change that we need to go through. No, but we, and they, what they're pointing out, the students, is everybody has a stake in this. This is their future. And they want us as universities and as an educational system to make a difference. And they also know better than us in some ways that the only way this is going to happen is if we work together and get out of our silos. And that's what they're doing, and that's what they're pushing us to do. And I think that's the real challenge for us. There are a lot of great little things happening. It's pulling it all together as a system to make a difference and to solve problems that will really have the impact that we all want. Thanks. Thank